okay so we shall start now okay so welcome everyone to this live session of day 7 of refresher course in mathematics conducted by ramanujan college in collaboration with teaching learning center ramanujan college so today's lecture is by professor s arumugam so he will be talking on protection in networks so please sir Okay. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, welcome to this second talk of mine. we are going to see how to protect a network a real network okay it can it has come up from a practical problem starting from a popular article written by ian stewart he wrote an article called defend the roman empire this is the title of the paper it appeared in scientific american in 1999 okay and hedatnami and the group converted the concept presented in this paper into a mathematical idea into a mathematical definition and that opened up a huge research topic in graph theory Called security, secure. How to secure a network? Okay. So let me first look at the problem posed by Ian Stewart in his just two-page paper. So it's just one third. This is one third. So one third. Yeah. Okay. So it's a Roman emperor by name Constantine who was ruling the Roman Empire in fourth century AD. His empire looks like this. So there is Rome, capital of this empire, and Gaul, Iberia, North Africa, Egypt, Asia Minor, and Britain are all under his rule. Okay. So this is the picture of the Roman Empire. The emperor Constantine wants to defend the whole empire. Okay. So he wants to defend the empire, and He has four groups of soldiers with him. Four groups of soldiers are with him. With that four groups of soldiers, he wants to defend the entire empire. Okay, but he has put a peculiar condition, namely, the region is securable if a group can move to that place in a single move. Okay, if a group can move in a single move to that place. Then that place is securable. Second condition is put is at least two groups must occupy a region before a group can move out of it. In other words, he wants to see that even if a group leaves out, one more group remains there. So these are the two rules he has put in. So a region is securable if a group can move. To that region in a single move, and the group can move only if there are two groups at that place. So these are the two conditions which the Roman emperor Constantine imposed. So with this condition, he put the question: How much of this empire can be protected? Okay, fine. So the solution. Chosen by him is two troops are put in Rome and two troops are put in Constantinople, four, so that if attacks takes place in any of these four places except Britain, one can move. So in his solution, Rome, Britain is not protected, and everything else is protected. so this is the solution 
which the emperor chose. Okay, is there a better solution? Yes, there is a better solution. What is it? You put two in Rome, one in Britain, one in Asia Minor. Let's go back. Put two in Rome, one in Britain, one in Asia Minor. Is everything defended now? Yes, because there are two in Rome, which can move to Gaul or Iberia, North Africa, and Egypt, and continental Rome. And here there's already one group, and Britain, there's already one group. So put two groups in Rome, one group in Britain, one group in Asia Minor, this saves the whole empire, protect the empire. But possibly the emperor was not satisfied with this solution. Because he thought, after one move, everything gets stuck. Okay, after one move, according to his formula, a second move cannot take place. Therefore, this solution is not acceptable for him. So he preferred this solution, though Britain is not protected under his solution. So this is how he chose the solution for his problem. So naturally, the successors of the Constantine lost control over Britain, and Britain became independent. Okay, the successors lost control of Britain. So this is a historical background of the problem. So let us try to formulate it mathematically. So we have a graph, a network, a real world physical network, the network of regions, okay, or network of a computer, computer network, or a communication network, okay? A real world physical network is there. We, we are trying to put minimum number of groups on the vertices of the network so that the entire network is defended. By defended, we mean when an attack takes place at a position, one group can move and defend that place. Okay. So what's the minimum number of groups to be deployed for defending the entire network? Alternatively, suppose I have only K groups available with me. How to distribute these K groups so that maximum can be protected? Okay. Maximum can be protected. The two different problems. Because in the Constantine case, only four groups of soldiers are available. Four is fixed. With the available four group, what's the maximum we can protect? Okay? So there are two types of problems. Given a graph, what's the minimum number of groups needed to defend the whole graph? Or given K, with K groups, what's the maximum we can protect? So there are two different types of problems. Problem one has been extensively investigated, and problem two still not completely investigated. Okay. Let us formulate the problem. Okay, suppose there are two more uh, connections in the previous network. You see that a lot of solutions are available. So many solutions are available with four groups. If you had additional two edges in the graph, okay, with additional two edges in the graph, for example, if you put two in Britain and two in Egypt, see what happens. Two in Britain and two in Egypt will protect everything. Yes, two in Britain can take care of Gaul and Iberia, and two in Egypt can take care of the remaining. So similarly, there are so many possible solutions to the problem. The whole empire, empire can be protected with the distribution of the four groups according to any of this formula. Okay, good. So what is the mathematical formulation of the problem? 
So take a graph with vertex set V and edge set E. You have a map F from the vertex set V to 0, 1, 2, etc. K, where K is the number of groups available. So F of V equal to 0 means no group is employed at that vertex. At vertex at, with label 1, one group is deployed. At a vertex with label 2, two groups of soldiers are placed, and so on. So F of V is the number of guards placed at V. So the function F can be described by V0, V1, V2, VK, K subsets. K, disjoint, K plus 1 disjoint subsets of the vertex at V, where VA denotes the set of all vertices where high groups of soldiers are employed. Okay. That means for the protection of the empire, every vertex in V naught must be adjacent to one vertex in the remaining place so that that fellow can move and defend V naught. Okay. This is the problem. In the language of graph theory, this just means that V0 is dominated by V1 union V2 union VK. Because every vertex in V minus V0, one of them can move to different V0. So with this idea, the formal definition of dominating function was introduced. So what is a safe function? Let me go back. What is a safe function? A function is like this. V0, V1, V2, Vk, where Va is the set of all vertices at which I groups of soldiers are placed. Okay. Now, suppose the guards are stationed according to the function. Suppose a guard at some position moves along an edge to deal with a problem U at V0. What happens then? So your guards placed, V0 is a place where no guard is available. At the vertex of V0, some problem is coming. So one group of guards move from its present position B to the position U to safeguard that vertex. If that happens, what happens then? At the vertex V, the number of groups comes down by one because one group has moved from B to U, okay? One group has moved from B to U. So at, at V, number of groups has come down by one. And at U, one group has come up extra. So this is a new distribution function after one move takes place. So that is denoted by the symbol F suffix VU. When one group from V moves to U, the revised distribution of the soldiers is given by this new function. Okay. The revised distribution of the soldiers is given by this new function. Fine. So a safe function means when such a movement takes place, we say that U is defended by V. U is defended by V. Or V defends U. Okay? Or V defends U. Such a function is safe function. Right? Okay. Now, safe function of the form V0, V1 is simply dominating set. Because every vertex in V0 must be adjacent to a vertex in V1, only then it can be defended. V0, V1, V2 
is a situation where V naught is defended by a vertex in V minus V naught. But if it is wants to be Roman, it should be adjacent to a vertex in V2. Because Roman Empire has stipulated that only in a position from V2, movement can take place. If there is only one group at V1, that group cannot move. Okay, that is the condition of the Roman Empire. So, okay, so that type of domination is called Roman domination. Okay, so that's, that's a big literature on this topic. So, what is a Roman domination? It is simply a function f equal to v naught, v one, v two. A Roman dominating function is a function f represented by v naught, v one, v two, where v naught is set of all vertices where there is no god. V one set of all vertices where there is exactly one god, and v two the set of all vertices where there are two gods. And if your problem occurs at a vertex u in v naught, there must be a vertex v in v2 such that that vertex can move to v naught. That group can move to v naught to defend that vertex. So equivalently, for every u in v naught, there's a V in neighborhood of U intersection V2. Then we say that the function is same. Okay? Every vertex in V0 must be adjacent to a vertex in V2. That's all. Only then, a, a, a troop of soldiers from V2 can move to that vertex in V0 and protect that vertex, defend that vertex. So this is the problem. And what is the minimum number of troops needed to defend the entire network? And that is called the Roman domination number. Okay, that is noted by gamma suffix R of G. Okay. So you want to find the minimum number of soldiers to be placed in the network such that every vertex which is not occupied by a soldier is adjacent to a vertex where there are two groups of soldiers. That's all. Every vertex of V0 is adjacent to a vertex of V2. And what is the minimum number of groups of guards needed to defend the entire network? That minimum is called the Roman domination number and is noted by gamma r. Okay, so this is the formal definition which came from the historical problem. Okay, so the historical problem is this much only. How to define this empire by putting two group, two or two groups or one group or no group at vertices, distribute them. Okay, so this is the distribution. So Rome has value two, constant world has value two, all other things have value zero. So here V naught, V2 has two vertices, everything else is V naught. Okay, so that is the notation in our language. Okay. So that is the notation in our language. V naught, V1, V2. Okay, fine. So every vertex in V0 is adjacent to at least one vertex in V2. Such a function is a Roman dominating function. And its cardinality is number of soldiers placed. What's the number of soldiers placed? It is cardinality of V1 plus twice cardinality of V2. Why twice cardinality of V2? Because two groups are employed at each vertex of V2. So what's the total number of soldiers employed? twice mod V2 plus mod V1. That must be minimized. So twice mod V2 plus mod V1 must be minimized. That minimum number is the Roman domination 
number of the graph G. Okay. It's almost immediate that the Roman domination number lies between the useful domination number and twice the domination number. Because what's the dominating set? You have a graph G, take a subset. That subset is a dominating set. If every vertex outside is adjacent to a vertex inside, yes. Okay? Every vertex not in yes is adjacent to a vertex in yes. Then yes is a dominating set. And the minimum cardinality of a dominating set is the domination number of the graph. And that is denoted by the symbol gamma. Okay. For example, if you take the cycle on four vertices, two vertices form a dominating set. So gamma is two. Okay. For the star graph, gamma is one. Because central vertex dominates the whole thing. For the complete graph, the domination number is one. Okay. For the complete bipartite graph, it is two. Take one in one part it set and one in the other part it set. If both part it sets have at least two vertices. Okay. So domination number is the minimum cardinality of a dominating set. If you have a graph G and you have a dominating set, put two soldiers at every vertex of the dominating set, then that satisfies the Roman condition. See, so take a dominating set. Put two sets of soldiers at that at each of them. Put two groups of soldiers at each of the dominating vertex. Then you see any vertex also is adjacent to one of them, so one group can move and protect that place. Okay, that is why it follows that the Roman domination number cannot go beyond twice the domination number. So the Roman domination number lies between domination number and twice the domination number. Okay? Fine. And it is equal to domination number if and only if the, there is no edge in the graph. If there is no edge in the graph, how will you defend? All are isolated vertices. How will you defend? At every place, you must put two fellows. No other alternative. Right? If g equal to k and bar, Every place you must put one soldier. So gamma r equal to gamma. Okay. That's the only case when gamma r equal to gamma. And for P3, it is twice gamma. For P3, you know the middle vertex is dominating. So if you put two soldiers there, it is well. And you cannot manage with one soldier anywhere. Okay. So here is a situation where Roman domination is twice gamma. Here's a situation where dominance is exactly gamma. So both, both extremes are attainable. Both extremes can take place. Okay. Fine. Now, uh, we slightly weaken the condition. So it's called weak Roman domination. See, what Roman domination demands is that Every vertex in V0 is adjacent to a vertex in V2 because the Roman Empire has put the restriction that a troop can move only if there are two troops available there. There's unnecessary restriction placed by the Roman Emperor. So you remove that, make it a little more liberal. Okay? Make it a little more liberal. So you say a weak Roman dominating function is a safe function such that for every u in V0, there's a vertex in, there's a neighbor of u in V minus V0. That neighbor can be either in V1 or in V2. In other words, you allow your group to move even if there's only one group sitting there, no problem. That's weak Roman domination. A troop can be allowed to move even if there is only one, one sitting there. Okay? So that is the weak Roman domination number. Weak Roman domination function. Okay? 
So that's denoted by gamma suffix small r. R, see the original Roman is gamma suffix capital R, that's strong. And you put capital R by small r, it becomes weak. Okay, the weak, the weak Roman domination. So it's essentially uh, protection of a graph is simply employing movable guards, placing movable guards at the vertices of the graph so that whenever a problem or an attack takes place in some unguarded vertex, one group can move to that place and defend that place. That is the idea of uh, protection of a network. Good. Fine. So this has been generalized in several ways. One is the nice concept called secure domination. Secure domination. Okay. This was just been extensively studied. So you have a network. Okay. You put guards at some places in the network. Then you demand that for every U in V naught, there's Whenever there is no guard, there must be some fellow at an adjacent place, there must be a guard. So you can move. Okay. But that's nothing but saying V1 is a dominating set. Okay. But then what we demand is that when the guard moves from one place to another place, the new set of guards must also be a dominating set. Okay. This is Secure domination. I suppose the concept is clear. I'll give an example. Suppose you, you take uh, P4, take P4, okay? Take two end vertices, put soldiers there. But put two soldiers at the end vertices, one at each end vertex. When a soldier moves to a new place, the new set of soldiers also forms a dominating set. Okay. The new set of soldiers also forms a dominating set. Then I say that it's a secure dominating set. For example, you take C6, cycle on six vertices. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Put a guard at V1 and a guard at V4. Choose V1 and V4. Is it a dominating set? The answer is yes. Because V1 dominates V2 and uh, V2 and V6. V4 dominates V3 and V5. So V1 and V4 forms a dominating set for C6. However, suppose an attack takes place at V2, then V1 will move to V2. V1 will move to V2. Then what's a new set of soldiers? They are in V2 and V4. New set of soldiers are V2 and V4. They cannot now defend the V6. V2 and V4 does not dominate V6. So after a movement, the new set is not a dominating set. So you see that for C6, V1 and V4 forms a dominating set, but does not form a secure dominating set. I hope it is clear. For the C6 cycle on six vertices, V1 and V4 forms a dominating set. So domination number is two. However, V1 and V4 is not a secure dominating set because if V1 moves to V2, then V6 is not dominated. If V1 moves to V6, then V2 is not dominated. Similarly, if V4 moves to V5, V3 will not be dominated. 
So after a guard moves, the resulting set is not a dominating set. So two vertices do not form a secure dominating set for C6. Now, can you give a secure dominating set for C6? How many soldiers you have to put? For secure domination of C6, how many soldiers must be put? Let us ask the question. Okay, for secure domination of C6, how many soldiers must be employed? Two is not enough. That's what we demonstrated. Two is not enough. Can you manage with three? Suppose I put soldiers at B1, B3, and B5. Not yet vertices. Okay, I put a soldier at B1, B3, and B5. Is it secure domination? Check. If B1 moves to B2, what will happen? Is the resulting thing still dominated or not? Okay. B1, B3, B5. Is the placement of soldiers. B1, B3, B5 are the places where soldiers have been placed. Suppose one fellow moves to a nearby place. A problem occurs. One fellow moves. After a moment, you look at the new set of distribution and check whether it is still a dominating set. If it is still a dominating set, then I am going to say that it is a secure dominating set. That's all. Okay. You can check that three soldiers form a secure dominating set for C6. So domination number is two, secure domination number is three for C6. Okay. So this concept of protection has been extensively studied in literature. Okay, secure domination in graphs. Okay. And people go for full proof. Full proof. That is, it should be eternal. When, uh, if you have a Roman dominating function, when a fellow moves, when a fellow moves, the new set of soldiers is like this. The new function is like this. The new function is like this. One fellow is reduced at V, one is increased at U. This new set, new function should again be a Roman dominating function. Then you say it's eternal. It's the eternal Roman domination. Okay. It's much more complicated. So people have studied eternal Roman domination and eternal secure domination and so on. See some minute difference. Okay. Fine. So secure domination is one well-studied concept in domination. And so Roman domination, weak Roman domination. People have defined so many variations like double Roman domination, outer independent Roman domination, and so on. So many variations of this dominating functions have been studied in the literature. Okay. Similarly, you can talk of foolproof object. So the idea is the same as secure, but the only thing is, even after the moment, the resulting set should be secure dominating set. Then it is called full pull secure domination. Since for secure domination, we are demanding that after a moment, the result is simply a domination. That's all. I don't worry about the second moment. That is secure domination. For full pull secure domination, even after one moment, second moment should also be possible. Then it is foolproof, secure domination. Okay, fine. There's not much work on, on these things. 
So you have several strategies for protecting a network. The main focus is how to defend an unguarded vertex. Okay. How to defend an unguarded vertex. Okay. So this is the focus of the problem. But however, there can be a different situation. In a practical problem, instead of defending an unguarded vertex, your guards are placed in the network. You want to leave one guard and replace him by another person. One fellow leaves duty. One fellow leaves the duty. Another fellow comes and replaces them. Okay? So instead of uh, movement, I'm talking about replacement. Okay? Instead of movement, I want to replace one fellow from the reserve. One fellow is sitting idle in some other place. He comes and replaces this fellow. It is replacement. Okay? So, for to address this problem, I introduced a concept called co-secure domination. So, in co-secure domination, it's again V0, V1. Either no soldier or as, or as one soldier. In, in secure domination, what we are demanding is for every V in V0, there's a fellow in V1 such that that fellow can move. Okay? A fellow in V1 can move to V0 to safeguard him. But in my definition, for every fellow in V1, there is one in, one in V0 who will come there. That is, one in V0 comes and uh, replaces V1. V1 goes away, a new person comes there. So this is what we call co-secure domination. And the minimum number of soldiers in a co-secure domination, we call co-secure domination number. This is introduced by myself and one of two of my postdoctoral students. Uh, well, we found that all the three numbers are different. For this graph, gamma is two. You have to put V2 and V7 forms a dominating set. V2 and V7 forms a dominating set. Okay. But it is not secure because if V7 moves to V2, V8, V6 is not secure. V6 is not dominated. So you see, for secure domination, I must put one in V5 and one in V6. Then it will be secure. For co-secure, you put one in V5, that is enough. So here is a situation where gamma is two, co-secure is three, and secure is four. And there is no vertex of degree, full degree. Okay, there is no vertex of full degree. This is just an example to illustrate how the parameters can be studied. Because co-secure domination, only two, three papers have come. And afterwards, people imitated the idea and, and introduced co-Roman domination. Okay? So they imitated this and got many more similar parameters. So you see that this concept of secure, co-secure, Roman, Roman, weak Roman, and uh, double Roman domination, outer independent Roman domination, or so many new ideas. What's outer independent Roman domination? I'll just explain, that's all. So here is the Roman domination situation. V0, V1, V2. V0, where no soldier is placed. V1, exactly one soldier is placed. V2, two soldiers are placed. This is a distribution. What's the condition we are demanding? For every vertex in V0, there's a neighbor in V2. That is, that's Roman. For every vertex in V0, 
is neighbor in V2. Okay. For every vertex in V0, this neighbor in V2. That is from a place where two people are present, one can move and defend V0. Okay. This is Roman domination. If you further demand that, that's so that V0 is independent. That's that is vertices where no soldier is present. That forms an independent set. Then people called it outer Roman dominating function. The outer set is independent. Okay. The outer set is independent. They are not adjacent to each other. Then people called it outer independent Roman dominating function and the minimum coordinate is the parameter is studied. So once a concept comes, a parameter comes. Okay, fine. But the more interesting practical problem is the second problem that I have put. The more interesting practical problem. See, given a network, what is the minimum number of groups to defend the whole graph is one problem. Okay, given a network, what is the minimum number of groups to be placed to defend the whole network? This is one problem. But practical problem is, I have only K groups available with me. The number of groups of soldiers available is limited. That's a practical problem, right? We don't have unlimited number of soldiers where we can place them to defend the whole network. The number of groups is limited. I have K groups of soldiers with me. With this K group, what is the maximum that I can defend? Okay. With the available K group, what is the maximum that I can defend? This is a more interesting practical problem. Because in the practical situation, we have constraint. Okay. When you have a big network, network of thousands and uh, thousands of nodes, Okay, if we, to defend the entire network, I need a lot of groups of soldiers. So, but availability is small. So this is a more practical problem. With the available group, what's the maximum that you can defend? So this is a more interesting practical problem that one can solve. This is wide research problem. See, for example, take the ordinary dominating set problem. What is the domination number of a graph? The minimum cardinality of a subset of V, of a subset of V, such that every vertex outside is adjacent to a vertex inside. The minimum cardinality is the domination number of the graph. So if the dominating number is gamma, if you put gamma soldiers at this place, then everything is dependent. Any, any a soldier can move when attached takes place outside because everybody is outside is adjacent to this fellow inside. So one fellow from, from this can move and defend the uh, vertex. Okay. So if a graph has domination number k, if a graph has domination number k, then k soldiers can defend the whole graph. Fine. Now, suppose I put the reverse question. I have a graph with domination number k. Okay. I have a graph with domination number k. I give you another number L, where L is strictly less than k. L is six, strictly less than gamma. Okay, gamma is k. k. K elements are sufficient to dominate the whole graph. That's a minimum. I give a number L, which is less than k. Which is less than k. So L vertices cannot dominate the whole graph. Okay, L vertices cannot defend the entire graph. Ask the question, what is the maximum number of vertices that can be 
defended by L vertices, where L is less than gamma. This is a new parameter. What is the maximum number of vertices that can be defended by L vertices? I denote it by the symbol M suffix L. <coughs> So what is the input for the problem? A graph G, its dominance number is known to be equal to K. A number L less than K is given. So a graph G is given and the number L is given. And L is less than K. L is less than K. Question, what is the maximum number of vertices that can be defended by this L vertices. How to place the L, L soldiers so that these L soldiers will defend the maximum of the network, maximum possible part of the network. That maximum possible part I denote by the letter M suffix L. Defend, should define ML. Determine ML. It's completely a new New problem, simple problem. Okay, a very simple question. See, for example, you take a graph on 10 vertices. Like, for example, uh, take C9, graph cycle on 9 vertices. I give you two vertices. What's the maximum you can defend? With two vertices, What's the maximum you can defend? What is M2 for the cycle C9? With two vertices, what is the maximum part of the cycle you can, you can defend? Okay, that's the question. This case answer is simple. With two, I can define maximum six. Because if we put V1, it will defend V3 and V6. Then I will go, I will be, I will, I won't put anything in V3 because V3 is already taken care. So I'll go to V4 and place one at V4. Then you see six people are defended. So with two vertices, I can defend six vertices in the graph. That's the maximum that I can do. Okay. So what is the maximum that you can defined with two numbers, okay, with two numbers, that is M2, in general YML. This has been studied, or can be studied, for all types of secure domination. In fact, for Roman and the secure, this problem is more practical and more meaningful, okay? More practical and more meaningful. Given the graph G, and a constraint K, that's the maximum, that's the number of troops available with you is K. With that K, what is the maximum that you can defend efficiently? Okay, what's the maximum that you can defend efficiently? So that is a very interesting practical problem, the second problem, and it is largely uninvestigated. For several parameters, there's a lot of scope for research. Okay? One can try looking at this problem. Fine. So it is slightly different from the classical problem because here we are moving, moving from one place to another place. Okay? When move, something is moved, the distribution is changing. The new distribution is, is it must be again a good distribution. Okay, the new distribution is again good. That's the idea. The new distribution must be again good. Good in some sense. In the domination case, it should be again dominating. In secure, we say it's again secure dominating, and so on. Okay, so this is one idea. Move by a movable guards, movable guards placed in a network so that network is defended. 
again this another big interesting question in all these problems that has been investigated it is assumed that at a time only one place is attacked see at a time only one place is attacked that is the situation like this at a time only one place is attacked so simultaneously suppose two two places there's attack in two places what will happen suppose simultaneously two attacks are taking place can you defend according to the roman uh, roman rule when one fellow moves another fellow cannot move according to roman rule according to roman rule he cannot move okay so the at present the problem is such that it is taken care under the assumption that at a time only one one unguarded place is attacked at a time only one unguarded place is attacked then one fellow can move and defend that place okay one fellow can move and defend that place suppose simultaneously two place two unguarded places are attacked two unguarded places are attacked then i want two soldiers who can simultaneously move to these two places so that both the places are defended so i want to up approve simultaneous movement of two soldiers that means given a set of two vertices in v not v not means no no soldiers present i need two where soldiers are present so there is a matching between the first set to second set there is a matching between the first set to the second set let's say Okay, so simultaneously two attacks take place means I need two places where soldiers are present and a matching between the first two vertices and the second two vertices. So it's along the matching, two fellows can simultaneously move. Then we see in this model, simultaneously I can defend even if two attacks are taking place. Okay. so this concept has not been studied so this is this can be investigated where secure can be replaced by k secure domination or k secure domain domination it means that given a subset of k vertices in v not there is a subset of k vertices in the remaining portion such that between these two set of k vertices there's a matching there's a perfect matching so that along the matching k soldiers can simultaneously move to the remaining k places and simultaneously defend all the k places okay such a model is called k secure domination that is defending a network when simultaneously more than one attack can take place this is really a practical problem because in the present day situation we can easily imagine that simultaneous attacks are taking place in more than one place okay so that can also be modeled so this model involves matching matching in graphs see matching is a well studied concept in graph theory so by using the concept of matching one can formulate a security concept where simultaneously k attacks are taking place in the network when k attacks are taking place in the network i need a matching of k edges so that along the matching edges k k will simultaneously move and defend the k unguarded vertices so this is k secure domination which is 
yet to be investigated mathematically. So these are all uh, concepts coming in securing a network where movable guards are employed in the network. Movable guards are placed in the network. When the guard moves, the new distribution of guards is a new function if, uh, represented by the symbol F suffix VU. Okay. The new distribution is given by F suffix VU. You put condition on this F suffix VU and that gives you a parameter. That's all. If you simultaneously move K, it will become fx minus k and yet k places will become one. Okay, the function will be different. So everything is put in the language of a function. And that function satisfies a suitable condition. And what is the minimum weight of the function? That is the problem. Okay, so this is a new research concept in networks. So now we can discuss a few, few minutes for questions. So a lot of publications, which you can see here, on secure domination, protection of a graph. It's the first survey on the third paper is protection of a graph. So there I took the title. So, so many questions. Roman domination was introduced in 2004. Okay. So, shall we take the questions, sir, then? Yeah. Okay, Miranda, sir, you may ask the questions from the YouTube portal. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, the chat box is full of uh, all praises to you. And uh, everyone is uh, just appreciating the kind of talk and uh, the new area of research you have explained very well. So thank you, sir, for this. And uh, there is uh, one question from, uh, from a participant. So he is asking that uh, what will happen if cities are connected by multiple path that is underlying graph is multigraph. And multi then he is again asking that uh, so yeah, what will happen if cities are connected by multi path, multiple path. That's not a big deal. How the guard moves is not a problem for us. There is a guard yes. who won't secure the vertex. That's all. So if there are multiple roads, no problem. That's not so are these notions, sir? So are these notions defined for multiple graphs? Yeah. Okay. You see, it does not going to change the number. The okay. Is not going to change, you see. The parameter is not going to change when the graph is a multigraph. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, in continuation, is also asking whether it will change the context of problem. Change the Will it change the problem. context of the problem? Means they, he wanted to ask the, the whether the parameter will change or not. Okay. See, what is the condition that are implying is the problem? Okay. See, you have a function, a function giving the description of the current distribution of the soldiers. The current distribution of the soldiers, in what way you want to defend that condition you can put in your own way. See what Roman emperor has put is, movement is permissible only when two troops are present. Okay, so you can have a distribution of soldiers and then you can, def you can define your own defending mechanism and for that mechanism, you can ask what's the minimum number of soldiers to be placed. So a lot of new things can be formulated. Okay, for example, you may say that for every B naught, there's exactly one soldier who can come and defend it. Then it's called perfect secure domination. I studied that concept. 
Why do you want to put so many people? Make it perfect. Like that. Okay? You, it depends on what way you are going to impose the condition on the problem. It's wide open. Okay? It's wide open. The general so, sir, uh, the distribution yeah. of sir, supply will put a condition for defending. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, this is a uh, this is my question that uh, uh, this is related with the strategy of uh, war fighting and all. Just like uh, in uh, earlier time, uh, when uh, there is a war, then there were many uh, view kind of thing that uh, this is chakra view uh, or something. So this is something uh, related to this. Uh, this concept is related to with that. Okay. War is strategy, war is strategy, or defense is strategy. Right. Okay. Here can we know, relate to this concept with that? We, we can try. Let us see how, how, to, how to formulate it as a problem. That's the question. You can see. Okay, sir. Okay. For you three to gas, so this is. And one more thing, sir. Okay. Uh, if take one input, more thing uh, can be related with the. Uh, transportation uh, transportation problem right. and all because right. we are uh, looking right. at the shortest path and all. Right, right. So sort of transportation. Right. It's a sort of transportation. So I Do think you... that there is a no, yes, no more question now uh, in the chat box. And uh, yes, there are so many appreciation in the phrases. Weighted graph, the whole problem may be more interesting. Because if you have weight, weights on edges, it depends on the time that taken by the guard to move to that place. Yes, sir. You see, it will be more interesting. If you formulate the problem for weighted graph and study that, that will be a big, big, it can become a thesis. Yes, sir. It will be a nice problem to study. It will become a thesis. Because it will be more closer to the practicality. It's more close to practical thing. Yes, sir. Yes. That weight can be the time taken by the soldier to move to that place. Something like that. Yes, sir. Then this is a more practical problem. Yes, sir. Because uh, in real life we have like if we have two paths, there will be one path will be which will be shorter. There will right. be another path which will be longer. Right. In one place, it's very difficult to go. It may be a hill area. So yes, many yes. practical problems come. So the problem becomes more interesting. If you take G to be a edge weighted graph, that is completely open for uh, study. Take an edge weighted graph and do the same thing. Sir, how about defining a notion similar to this in hypergraphs? Because whenever. Uh -huh. uh, so. In hypergraph, even domination is not well studied. In ordinary domination, it's not very well studied. Okay. It simply say adjacent means each hyperedge becomes a complete graph. Because in, in general, in hypergraphs, we have a set of vertices as, as a node. Right. And in reality also, like uh, if we have a, a camp of some uh, army camp, so there will be a lot of officers there in, the, in that camp. So there will be some camps which have large right. number of officers. There will be some camp which have right. lesser number of officers. So if we can define something like this in hypergraphs, will it not be a very good idea, sir? The point is, when do you say that a vertex dominates another vertex in a hypergraph? We have to say define adjacency for that, like intersection of two. That's the lie on the same edge. Yes. That means the edge becomes a complete graph. That's yes, all. Yes. So it becomes trivial in that sense. So you have to make the Definition itself more more complicated. <laughs> yes. So that it becomes theoretically interesting. If you simply say adjacent, it becomes trivial. Yes. It becomes a trivial graph termination problem. That's it. Uh, sir, one more question. Yeah. Uh, recently has come. So uh, the participant is asking: Is there a is a possibility of one soldier being replaced with uh, two soldiers? Both having capacity equaling to one they have replaced. That's it. Uh, he wanted to replace one soldier by two, and the two having uh, together the same capacity as that single soldier was having. 
<laughs> so he is putting the uh, weights on vertices also i think yeah weight on vertices yes vertices and uh, increasing the number of vertices also oh. because yes. uh, he wanted to replace one by two correct That, that be and giving equal weight to the vertices. That's practically yeah. not so attractive. Whereas edge weight is practically. It will become very difficult to define and to study, sir. I think. Right. That's right. Rather, the other way is all is good. Looks good. Uh-huh. We can have uh, one uh, in place of two. Okay. <laughs> Or three. <laughs> Okay, we can. That so that is. So we can use a number of soldiers. Generally, I am putting. We 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 want to k. See, my general definition is one to k, right? My general definition is one to k. Any number, we can any number of soldiers we can put. And the weight is going to be i into mod vi. That's the total number of soldiers. Okay. So generally, I have put the general definition. Ah uh, yes, that we can change in any way you want, <laughs> according to your uh, practical situation. That's not a uh, problem. Okay, so this this WF is the total number of soldiers employed. That's all. By the distribution. Sir, yes. so I wanted to ask one thing. So you you you. Talked about this uh, this uh, concept that if you have given any number k, ah. then you try to find the maximum number of vertices that can be defined by deploying k right. number right. of groups. So, is there any condition on k like this k is optimal or this k is better than the other k? Such any such conditions okay. on this k only? Okay. It's a constraint. K is it's a constraint. Yes, sir. I have only ten ten group of soldiers with me. It is ten group. What's the maximum I can defend? So only condition is k is less than gamma. If k equal to no, gamma, but sir, but sir, it might be possible that with ten groups also you might be able to defend the same number of uh, what is it? And with nine groups also there may be possibility that you might be defending the same number of uh, what is it? So my point is, if k is small. I cannot defend the entire empire. Yes, sir. You cannot defend entire. Uh... Can defend. And what is the way to distribute to attain that maximum? So many problems are coming there. Yes, sir. But if you have suppose you have two numbers, k one and k two, okay. so there will be a possibility that uh, you might be able to defend the same number of uh, vertices with both the maybe k one and k two. Maybe, maybe. So. Uh, so then, I, so then we can also then sir we can look for this minimality of this optimizing this k which k will be the optimal of all the these. See, then k equal to gamma will be the ideal situation. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyway, see even this basic problem has not been completely addressed. Yes. Even k, what's the maximum we can defend? Yes. It's not completely addressed. Once that is addressed, we can go for deeper questions. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Sir, so you you said. So uh, sir, one more thing that uh, you said that co-secure domination number is better than secure domination number. Co-secure uh, is a different problem. Yes, sir. But you said that it, okay. and there are graphs also. There are uh, graphs in which sec- secure domination number is smaller than secure domination number. For a particular example only. Yes, sir. For secure domination is three, whereas secure domination is four. Yes, sir. And domination number is only two. It's only for this particular graph. Yes, sir. So, sir, are there graphs in which co-secure domination number is bigger than secure domination number? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Okay, Mr. Sir, are there more questions on YouTube? 
Okay. Fine. Uh, no, sir, there is no question. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we I'll can thank the... Okay, okay, so then we can thank Professor Arumugam for his nice lecture. Thank you, sir. And we... So with this, we come to an end of this session. Okay. Your feedback forms are available on the portal. You, you all can fill the feedback form. And thank you for your encouraging participation. And thank you once again, sir, for your nice lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir.